Jane Jackson. Awesome. You know what? We're, we're not that in it, John. He played that song the way it went. Yeah. That was awesome, man. Yeah. That was awesome. awesome. Okay, we have uh, one more. Hey, everybody. We're here at Encore Chat, remote again. I'm here with John Hummel, amazing drummer. Um, has done a lot of really, really cool things. And I'm just going to ask him a couple of questions. Thank you for coming on the show. And I got a couple of questions. One, how did you get started? What started you out playing the drums? Um, when I was 10 years old, uh, my best friend at the time let me hear Kiss Destroyer. And uh, that was pretty much where it all started. Okay. And what did you do from there? And then I uh, found a drum set that somebody had thrown out on the curb for garbage. Um, I banged on that for, I think, a few months, and then my parents got me lessons, and when I saw it, I was serious, then they got me a real drum set for Christmas. What was your first drum kit? It was, the brand was DIA. Nice. Um, it was just a little four-piece blue sparkle. Okay. Cool. Uh, but it was, uh, it was, I mean, the drums were tiny, but at the time, they were the biggest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Well, you're probably tiny, too. Uh, yeah, I was. So when you first started taking lessons, was it like at a local music store? Or? Um, it was, yeah, actually it was a place in Bloomfield, the Broad Music Center. Um, How old were you again? I was 10 when I started lessons. Uh, with a teacher named Carl Wolf. Very, very cool. Um, he, he was an amazing teacher, an amazing drummer. And I guess you started getting a little bit older. When did you start playing with bands and stuff? Um, well, I guess I was like, I was probably still 10 or 11 when I started playing in my first band. And I think it was really the band was just me and a guitar player who sang. Still a band. You're banding together. So yeah. That's cool. Did you continue to study from there? Yeah. Um, I went on to one more private teacher, um, but uh, it just, uh, I really wasn't learning much from her, so those lessons stopped. And then, uh, I mean, really most of what I've, I've learned and use has come from listening to records. Okay, did you play in high school or anything? Like in um, a marching band? Then march yeah, yeah, in high school I played in marching band, um, concert band, jazz band. Okay, so you, you, you've been pretty well studied. Uh, how, how do you feel about the internet? How do you feel about it's how it's affecting music, how it's affecting your career? Um, well, I feel like it's, it's a necessary thing. If you don't have it, you're, you're not gonna get anywhere. You have to be a presence on the internet. So it's a good thing. It's a good vehicle to get yourself out there. But at the same time, uh, I feel like it's now, it's just everything's just oversaturated. There's so many people out there with <coughs> where I guess there was a time that it was easier to make um, to make a mark because you the competition, not the competition, but there's just so much potential for so many people to be exposed at one time, like finding anything in that whole ocean. It's that. like, yeah. How do you feel about the internet as far as like learning chops or licks or, or any of that stuff? Like say if you were 10, mm -hmm. do you think that'd be a good place for you to go or do you think oh, you should yeah. have oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, to be able to, you know, back when I was trying to learn how to play these songs I was hearing on records, I just had to go by what I heard and um, and to actually be able to see um, somebody, maybe even the person that actually played the song, uh, you know, in the band, the guy that actually played the part you hear on the record, yeah. now you can see him play it from behind the drum kit with a camera on his feet. You know, it's like right. you can, it's uh, it's just it, it's a mu it's much easier to learn to find ways to learn. You know, now I've seen you on the internet with like some world-class players on this thing called the Bonzo Bash. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, that's, it's a, um, it's a tribute to John Bonham. And it happens, well, now it happens twice a year. Um, and it seems like it's always, um, you know, in January it happens in Los Angeles. And then uh, in May or June it happens in New Jersey or New York. And um, it's a, uh, there's a guy named Brian Tishy. Um, he's an uh, amazing drummer. He's played uh, with Foreigner, Billy Idol, Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, um, he has his own band called Sun. He's played with White Snake. Um, he's just 
done a lot, and he's uh, it was his idea to have a tribute to, to John Bonham and basically have a house band that learns all these Zeppelin songs and then celebrity drummers like like all these guys that are really well known come in and each guy plays one song with this house band. All just all in the spirit of celebrating John Bonham. How did you and become a part of it? Um, I was doing a gig with uh, the Matt O'Ree band uh, in Connecticut. We were opening for Foreigner, and Brian was drumming with Foreigner. And uh, after we got done with our set, um, Brian came up to me, and we were just talking. We hadn't seen each other in a long time. We really didn't even know each other that well. Um, but uh, we just started talking, and he was like, I, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like you to come and do this uh, this thing. And I was like, well, of course, I'd love to do it. Um, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, then it, and then it came around, and, and somehow it, it became like uh, where you had to uh, submit a video and be judged in a contest mm -hmm. to, to be like the unknown guy that can come in and get behind the kit. And, uh, and I was one of the guys, along with uh, another drummer, Phil Eureka, who got picked. And uh, so we each did half of Heartbreaker. Um, um, but a and then after that, um, I just, you know, Brian invited me back for the next one and the next one. Now, I know that there were a lot of cats that you really enjoyed their playing. Who's, who's the most favorite person you've met on the Bonzo Bashers? I can't really pick one favorite person, but I, I think the biggest deal was meeting Carmine Peace. Nice. Who also gave you a great compliment. So that was pretty wild too. Yeah, that that, that that blew my mind, and it was. It, I mean, Carmine Peace. He has a an instructional book, Realistic Rock, which has been out since the '70s, and I learned a lot from that book, and um, just uh, and I brought it with me to the Bonzo Bash, and I actually sat with Carmine, and and there were photos, and I have the old edition of photos from you know his his. his I didn't know, but they were the first drum things he'd ever done. Wow. And okay. there's all these people. He's like, oh, this is my brother. And, oh, this is my teacher. And um, and uh, it, so and he, he was just telling me some stories about, like, and it, about what happened during these, this, these photos when, when they were being taken. But uh, it was just, it was really, it was just amazing to sit and have a conversation with the guy who's, I mean, he's such an amazing player, and he's, he's just, uh, he's a legend. Besides the Bonzo Bash, you do a lot of other things. So what are some of the other things we, that you're doing? Um, well, uh, the band that I'm most busy with is the Matt O'Ree band. Um, and we've been, you know, for, for the past, like, three, year, three or four years, we've been doing a lot of touring around the country. Nice. So um, is that your mainstay? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. One, one last question, John. Um, what would you tell any aspiring player, one, about studying, of how you feel about that, and two, about just pursuing a career in music? Um, you know, as far as studying goes, just uh, wh whatever, whatever you're drawn to, um, just, like, just really get into it, you know, like, and find out, try to find out what's going on underneath, you know. What do you mean by that? Uh, it's hard to put it into words, but uh, like whatever it is that's making you feel something, when you're listening to it, try to em get that emote, that you know, get that feeling that you're hearing, make it feel that way when you play it. Two, uh, what about you know, just some kid man wants to play the drums like you, like seeing you in front of all those people at the Bonzo Bash or all the people you've played in front of with the Matt Ray Band. What would you tell that kid? I don't know. <laughs> no, kept you going. Um, I wanted to be a rock star. Okay. Is that enough? Um, no, it's not enough. But well, so, what keeps you going now? Um, I just need to. I need to do it. I need to play music. Okay. I just need to. Okay. I, I now, that. I would still love to be a rock star, but. It's okay if I'm not. Well, I just you, gotta. You I need to play music. I've seen you play in venues where you're a rock star, dude. So, 
So that's cool. John, thank you so much for coming and being on Encore Chat. Um, they're gonna you gotta check the links below. There's gonna be stuff from the Matter Ray Band, and you can see where John's gonna play. And if you get a chance to go to a Bonzo Bash, check this guy out because him, amongst the other players, it is a night that is definitely well worth going to. So thanks again, Encore Chat Remote. Really put an effort in to learn an instrument. It's so so important. Thanks again for lending an ear. Thanks for stopping in to Encore Chat. I'm Pete Schmiedhauser that owns a small little store called Schmied's Music, 831 Route 10 East in the Pine Plaza Shopping Center in Whippany, New Jersey. Thanks, guys, and stay in touch to see more videos to come. Mm-hmm.